Hey everybody, it's Brian and welcome to the 54th LAMP tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing how to actually do all this SQL stuff in PHP. As you see, we've got our standard SQL select statement here and we're just going to modify this a little bit. We're just going to filter out some rows. You can see we just have our rows here. So, not too much different to what we've done before. So we're just going to grab this guy Oops. Copy that. Go into our editor here. I'm just going to say let's probably turn that into a proper string or it'll complain. There we go. So we've got a string which holds our select statement in here. And now what we need to do is actually connect to our database. And in the MySQL connect method, you see how we have a few things we need to give it here. We need to give it a host name, port, username, password, etc., etc. So we'll give it the server name. Whoops. 127001 is the same thing as localhost, but I'm just typing it out give it our username and our password. This will return a connection object. What we need to do here is actually see if we have an object. So we're saying if not canon then We're just going to say could not connect. And then we need a reason. We're just going to do MySQL and we're going to get the error message. So if we made it this far, we've actually connected. Uh oh, doesn't like this. What's going on here? Mm hmm. Ah, yes my semicolon at the end of that statement. There we go. So if we made it this far, means we have a connection. Now if you've opened a connection, you should also close it. So the first thing I always do is MySQL close. And the reason why you do that, it'll it'll do it automatically, but I just like freeing resources as soon as I'm done with them just to reduce overhead. And what I mean by it'll do it automatically, I mean when the PHP interpreter runs this page and it gets to the point it no longer needs it, it'll close or kill that object. But it may not happen for a few seconds, so I actually just like to close it immediately. So we have an active connection here, so we're just going to say echo we are connected. And let's see here. And it says, uh, could not connect access denied using password yes. Save this. 127001. Hmm. Probably help if I had the right password in there. At least we know that we are actually working right here. Ta da! We're connected. So once you're connected, then you can actually do something. And what we're going to do is use this SQL, and we can actually just take this little guy, cut that, and we're just going to paste it down here. That way it makes a little more sense what we're doing. Now we're going to actually, you know, submit the query. So we're going to say result equal my SQL query, and ta-da! We're going to give it the now one thing you might notice is that in our query we are not using the um, select database or the use, the use my store. So we're going to jump back in here and actually tell it to use that. We're going to say MySQL select DB or select database and we want to say 
my store because that's the name of the database and then we need the connection object and in case you're wondering yes you can have multiple connections going on at the same time to multiple databases it's very very powerful so let's save and run this now notice how nothing happened on the screen even though we got our result so what is this result well, let's let's examine this it says resource ID number three what is that hmm well let's take a look at this and we'll say echo is array let's see if this is an array hmm didn't like that either so as you can see it's not a true array so what we need to do here is actually grab a row so we'll say row equal and we need to say my sequel fetch that's how we're saying fetch array and we're giving it the result so what we're doing is saying take that result turn it into an array now this row will be a true array object so let's say echo see that one right there that is true so we're gonna just basically play around with this a little bit we're gonna say while we have an array so we're gonna say while we have rows we're just gonna echo out some properties from this row We'll echo out the description. And we'll echo out the call. Uh, what is it? Yes, the cost. My mind was totally wandering. I was thinking it's something work related. I have work on the brain today. Don't you hate that when you just want to come home and write some code and pesky work always gets in the way. So we're just going to add a little HTML goodness here. So you see how you have Mark's gun shop, Chad's gun shop, and Bob's gun shop. Let's actually throw out a uh, little HTML goodness here so you can actually see. So we have three records. So what was that when we echoed out this result? Let's do that again just so we can show you what's going on here. You kind of need to understand what's going on under the hood. Resource ID number three. So that's actually what's going on is you have a resource ID, not an actual array, and you have to fetch an array from the list of rows that's returned from the server. Sounds complex, but a lot of this stuff happens under the hood, so you don't even need to worry about it. And because now we have a true array here, we don't even need to do this. What we can do is just say extract row and in case I haven't covered this in previous tutorials what extract does is it takes an array and turns them into variables so now you can say echo description pretty neat huh Let's actually get rid of this so you can see that the results did actually change on the screen. See? Ta-da! So what we're doing is we're extracting the array, turning it into variables. So instead of saying row and then the element in the array, you can just call it as a variable itself. And then you can do computations and all sorts of other good stuff on it. So pretty neat stuff. Um, pretty effective. Really, really powerful. Um, one thing you should note is that the MySQL connect and like MySQL query and stuff, they're not fully object oriented. So you have to do simple error handling, not so much object oriented error handling. Um, I could be wrong about that, but be on the safe side.
So that's all for this tutorial. We have covered a lot of ground in this series. Um, to be brutally honest, unless something major comes up, I'm going to really consider this the last tutorial. Um, I am thinking about doing... Ta -da, see if I can get my web browser to load. These virtual machines are so slow, bear with me. Anyways, I'm thinking about doing some some frameworks. There are a lot of frameworks. The problem with frameworks in PHP is there's so many of them. Um, like if you just go to Google and type in PHP frameworks, I mean there's so many of them it's just mind-boggling. And like PHP frameworks is the first link that comes up. And I mean this is this isn't even all the frameworks out there, it's just a small subsection of them. Some of the more popular ones. Um, I've looked into a couple of these and the problem with picking a framework is the minute you pick a framework you instantly lose the attention of hundreds of thousands of people. For example if I choose Zend, well then all the people that want to learn Yi are going to go away. Or if I choose Yi, all the people that want to learn Zend go away. And the other problem with a framework is when you start working with a framework you're really locked into that framework's way of doing things. Now there are certain things like uh, fat-free PHP. Um, it's a very lightweight framework that allows you to do it, but it doesn't have a lot of the features. I mean, you can see a lot of the feature sets right here, like up here, where some of the more popular ones are like Cake PHP. Um, let's see, Yi. It stands for Yes, it is. It's a, a little acronym. I've actually played around with Yi. It's actually really good. Um, Zend. Zend is probably the most popular one, but it is in commercial based, meaning if you really want to get into Zend, you're going to end up spending some money. Symphony, I've heard, is also very good, but I've never touched it. So that's really all for this tutorial and pretty much all for this series, unless I really get into doing some frameworks. Uh, once again, voidrums.com, my website. You can find the, I'm trying to go out there and upload everything. I've been so busy with work, but you can find the complete source code to all of my tutorials and then some. Just go to my website, go to tutorials, go to lamp, and ta-da, there they are in all their glory. And I want to mention, like, if you go in here, you can download the source code, view the video, which will appear here in a second. Um, if you go to download the source code, there will be an annoying, hey, please donate now. My website's completely donation based. If you don't want to download, or I'm sorry, if you don't want to donate, don't donate. Just download now. But if you do want to donate, go ahead and click there and make a donation. Um, been a fun series. I've learned a lot. Uh, I appreciate you guys' feedback. If you guys really want to see a framework, let me know. But um, I don't know. It's going to be a hard decision for me, not just to do a framework or not, but which framework to do because there's so many of them. I mean, you could easily spend the next 10 years doing tutorials on just PHP frameworks. So that's all. Thank you for watching.